Russia is training North Korean soldiers to participate in the war against Ukraine at four military grounds, according to RBC Ukraine sources within Ukraine's intelligence services. The training is undergoing at military sites in Khabarovsk, Usurysk, Blagoveshchensk, and Vladivostok. Kirill Budanov, head of Ukraine's defense intelligence, said that Russia planned to deploy around 11,000 North Korean troops to Ukraine starting in November. The first group, consisting of 2,600 soldiers, is expected to be sent to Kursk. Meanwhile, South Korean intelligence says that North Korea will deploy a total of 12,000 troops. North Korean soldiers are already on Russian territory, being issued Russian military uniforms, according to the Strategic Communications and Information Security Center, Spravdi, on Facebook. The center released a video showing North Korean soldiers being outfitted in Russian military uniforms. These are recent footage, no older than 72 hours. This is the Sergeyevsky training ground in Russia's Far East, the center clarified. In October, Western media reported that North Korea intended to send troops to join the war against Ukraine. North Korean officers are already present in Russian-occupied territories in Ukraine and some may have been killed. Ukrainian intelligence estimates that around 10,000 North Korean soldiers are currently undergoing training in Russia. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky also confirmed that North Korea was preparing a contingent on Russian soil, which could include not only infantry but also other military units. Ivan Kirichchevsky, a Ukrainian military expert, noted that North Korea has no limits on the number of personnel that the Kremlin could count on. We have reason to believe that the North Korean military industrial complex operates as a branch of the Russian military industrial complex. Because the North Korea is very dependent on external supplies of resources, even energy resources, starting with fuel oil for power plants, which North Korea needs to get somewhere. Because without electricity, North Korean defense plants will not work. Some experts have analyzed the materials used to make the North Korean KN-23 missile and it has become known that this missile has Russian materials, even Russian drawings, the military expert said. According to him, the effectiveness of the North Korean defense industry will depend on the adequacy and timelines of the supply resources. As for the North Korea's personnel, it is better not to harbor any illusions that the North Korean military will run away or that they will be given few. The transfer of the first corps of 11,000 troops from the North Korea took place amid the North Korean regime's own announcement that 1.5 million people had suddenly voluntarily mobilized for the holy war. Unfortunately, North Korea's mobilized human resource is too broad and there are no limits on which the Kremlin can rely. That is, the Kremlin can count on more than the 11,000 troops that have already been transferred from the North Korea, Ivan Kirichchevsky summed up. Russia's Ministry of Defense released a video late Friday of what they said were Russian prisoners of war returning from Ukraine. According to the ministry's statement, 95 Russian servicemen were returned in exchange for 95 Ukrainian soldiers who were to be repatriated. The Russian servicemen were in Belarus from where they will be transferred to Russia, the ministry said. The ministry also said in its statement that the United Arab Emirates provided humanitarian mediation efforts during the return of Russian servicemen from captivity. Russian President Vladimir Putin praised the joint GDP of BRICS countries at a plenary session of the bloc's business forum in Moscow Friday. Putin noted that the total GDP of the members of the BRICS Association is more than $60 trillion and that its total share in the world gross product confidently exceeds the corresponding indicators of the G7 group. The alliance, with a stated aim of counterbalancing the Western-led world order, initially included Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, but started to rapidly expand this year. Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia joined in January, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Malaysia formally applied, 
and a number of others expressed desire to join. According to the results of the current year, the average rate of economic growth in BRICS is projected at 4%. This is higher than the rates in the seven countries, there it is only 1.7%, and then the global rates, the global rates will be 3.2%, Putin said. The Russian leader also toured an exhibition of the Russian Direct Investment Fund dedicated to cooperation with the BRICS countries at the forum. In the next few days, Putin will be shaking hands with two dozen world leaders, including China's Xi Jinping, India's Narendra Modi, Turkey's Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Iran's Masoud Pazeshkian at the BRICS summit in Kazan. Officials in Moscow are already touting the gathering in Kazan as a massive success. Putin's foreign policy aide Yuri Ushakov said two weeks ago that 32 countries confirmed participation, and 24 of them will send heads of state. Putin will hold around 20 bilateral meetings in Kazan, Ushakov said, and the summit may turn into the largest foreign policy event ever held on Russian soil.